Hi folks, I'm Ian Baker and today we're going to go over the 2020 Sprinter 320 MLS. This is one of my more favorite travel trailer floor plans that came out last year. I think they did a fantastic job. To be honest, not a lot has changed from 2019 to 2020, but just in case you haven't seen the 2019, I will go through this one for you. My favorite feature, of course, is this right here, which is the bar top kitchen in the back. You'll see that it is kind of an elevated bar. You have three bar stools that come with the RV. And it really makes a great entertainment space. You can have someone back here, you know, cooking or playing bartender and just have everyone here hanging out. You also have an electrical outlet on the far side. So if you need to plug in, uh, you know, like a, a blender or something else, you know, maybe you need to charge a buddy's cell phone, that's a great spot to do it. When we drop down a little bit, you will get some prep space here as well as your sink. Now, it's all solid surface throughout the kitchen, which allows them to undermount the stainless steel bowl. You also have this drying rack, which goes right up top there, and you can, that kind of helps double as prep space as well. You'll see the modern high-rise faucet. It is two-tone, which I like. And then over to the side is another electrical outlet in case you need to plug anything in. And as you will see, there is some auxiliary lighting. It's kind of tough to see during the day, uh, but that the LED rope light runs underneath the counter just to kind of help, uh, you know, again, give a little more accents in here. Storage in the very back. So big storage up top here as well as down below. Uh, I'll open this one up for you again just so you can kind of peek in there. So great storage space there. You have the microwave right in between. And then in the very back again, kind of you know further uh, helping to aid and make this kitchen really pop and stand out, you have this beautiful residential style stainless steel hood. You can see kind of the, the brick uh, look backsplash there. Two electrical outlets making this a perfect place for uh, a permanent spot for your coffee maker. You know, I like that they're actually mounted in the wall and they're not underneath cabinets or anything. That way, you don't have a, you know, a cord hanging down. It helps hide that. Three burner recessed cooktop again. Because it's recessed to glass cover, this is all great usable prep space. You just fold this up and back to access those burners. You'll see your knobs light up. And you have an oven underneath if you want to do some baking. And on both sides, you have three full extension ball bearing drawers, and they are not short drawers by any stretch. Uh, it is worth mentioning, I, I did forget to say that you also have a little bit of storage here underneath the sink. Don't want to forget about that. And then uh, right over to this side, right here essentially is your pantry for the kitchen. So plenty of dry storage here, a lot of great features in the back. But that's not it. Take a look over here. You have two fridge freezer combos. So not only do you have a ton of dry storage, but you have a ton of cold storage here as well. Though both of these do run off both propane and electric, and they have automatic switchover. Over to the side, again, more pantry space there. And then we get into the living area. So the cool thing about this, you know, essentially it is a, a rear kitchen setup, but with that you get this awesome mid-living setup. So you have theater seating, Thomas Paine collection, very comfortable, both of these recline. You have uh, armrests, you know, kind of on both sides here because you get the center one, two cup holders, and a spot for a remote. And this is directly across from the entertainment center, folks, which is exactly where you want it. Right over here on the back wall is, or kind of midship rather, I'm sorry, is the sofa. Cool thing about this is it creates, a, again, a nice entertainment space. Because people can be sitting at the bar, people can be here in the theater seating and here on the sofa, and everyone can still interact. Plus, you still have a good shot to the TV, and if guests need to stay the night, this does fold out into a bed. Even though if you don't want them to stay the night, you certainly don't have to let them know. Now, this the entertainment center is a slide out. TV front and center, storage on both sides. You kind of have some shelves down below. You have the Furion sound bar there for uh, better sound quality. It has an HDMI input. You also have two zone control, one of the zones being inside, the other one being outside. So this is how you control those outside speakers. And underneath that is the fireplace, which not only looks great, but essentially is an electric space heater. So that way, if you just want something to take the chill off, you can turn that on and it will do a great job of doing so. You have a little bit of storage here above the sofa. And if you take a look, you will see your main control panel, including your tank monitoring panel on there. Right over here to the side is your remote. This will allow you to control the uh, awning and the slides from outside. That way you can use the remote. And if you're in a tight spot, 
you can open those up to make sure you're not going to hit a tree or anything especially if you're in like a, a state campground or a national campground where they're a lot tighter that can be pretty helpful when you take a step into the bathroom two entrances and exits here the one we just came in moves out to the main living area this one right here of course up into the bedroom with the slider door right in between the two is your foot flush lever toilet i'll sit here as you can see plenty of room for both the legs as well as my shoulders over to this side is our sink top and vanity, stainless steel bowl, storage underneath, electrical outlet on the wall, and you have your mirrored medicine cabinet up top. In the corner is the neo-angle shower. This does have the doors that are in the roller track. So that way, you know, if you're done showering, all the water goes right down the doors into the shower pan on like a curtain or sometimes a swing door when it ends up on the floor. Let's talk about height. I am six foot tall, folks. As you can see, I have a little bit of space here to the ceiling, more so underneath that skylight. So if you're six three, you can actually stand underneath the skylight, not have to bend down. Otherwise, if you're six foot, maybe six one, you can pretty much move anywhere within that shower space. Last thing I do want to talk about is this slide here. So there is a room up front, which essentially is wardrobe. You kind of have this one, which is almost dedicated to the bathroom because it closes off, uh, you know, right here. So you have a little bit of hanging space there as well as some drawers right underneath. When we step into the master bedroom, you'll see the queen bed here right in the center. There is storage underneath, big storage, easy to access thanks to the struts. You'll also see big nightstands on both sides. That's pretty cool. Uh, one, it gives you some more storage outside, and two, it just having the big nightstand is great because you have a lot of spots, uh, a lot of places you can put things at night, including if you sleep with a CPAP machine, there is plenty of room. A couple electrical outlets on either side. The one side has a cubby hole too. Right up front, you will see the beautiful window. We'll take a better look at that when we go outside. I have to have the shade shut, unfortunately, for camera quality. But just know there is a roller blind here, and that's in a track. That way it's not swinging over top of you as you're sleeping. You'll see storage all the way across the top. A second AC dedicated to just the bedroom here. Keep you nice and cool. And then you have windows on both sides. Last thing I do want to touch on is what we talked about when we were in the bathroom, and that is the slide-out wardrobe here. You can see that hanging rod going all the way across and two large drawers underneath that. Now that we've seen the inside, let's take a look at some of the outside features on the 2020 Keystone Sprinter 320 MLS. Right up front here is a power tongue jack. You'll see the rocker switch to raise and lower the tongue, as well as a light right up front for added visibility at night. But this really makes it a lot easier to hook up and disconnect from your tow vehicle. Directly behind that, you have two 30-pound propane tanks with the cover. I love having the 30-pounders. A lot of manufacturers give you two 20s, so this way you can stay out camping longer. Behind that, you will see rails there for your battery, and directly in front of that on this little post is your battery disconnect. So that way, when you're done camping, you want to kill all power to the coach, just flip that switch and you won't have that parasitic drain. Coming up the front is black diamond plating. This helps protect the front end from rocks and debris that may get thrown up by your tow vehicle. And above that is the gorgeous front three-quarter cap. You can see the shine, kind of the reflection, the sparkle there in that front cap. You also have the beautiful windshield inlaid in the front, which lets in a ton of light during the day, gives it a great look, and you have the LED light up top at night. Coming around to the side, we'll open up the pass-through storage. Couple things here. One, it is magnetic. Also, you have the key alike system. So what that means for you is that anyone who has a 751 key, which is what all the baggage doors used to have, they can't get into your camper. They can't get into your storage. The only key that can get in here is the key that comes with the unit. If we take a look inside, you'll see again, as I mentioned, this is a large pass-through. You can fit some bigger items in here, like some of your larger chairs. You have a motion sensor light up there, an electrical outlet, and TV hookup. So if you want outside TV, you can hook it up right there, bring a little table or something, set it out here, and you're good to go. You'll see the power awning. Touch a button to roll that out. Same thing to go back in. It is the Solera awning, so it has the speakers built into the head of it. That way, when it's fully rolled out, the music is playing down on your campsite, not blasting out at the neighbors. You'll also see an LED light strip underneath there for additional light at night, and an electrical outlet here in case you need to plug anything in. These steps are the Moride Step Above Step System. Extremely sturdy. Folks, I'm over 200 pounds. You can see I can bounce on here. The steps hardly move. 
It has aluminum treads, which uh, won't rust. They'll stay looking beautiful for years to come. And you have the grip tape on there for some added traction, especially when it's wet out. Then you'll see the foldable grab handle here as well. So that way you have great control when entering or exiting the RV. You'll also see this little sticker here showing this one does have the premium thermal package. It has the Astro foil insulation, which does a great job of helping to keep the coach a lot more comfortable. So when it's hot out, it keeps it cooler. When it's cool out, it keeps it warmer. We take a look inside, you will see that the TV gets hooked up here. Again, if you want an outside TV, this is probably where I would have it, but if you want one up front, you have that option. It is all off the key TV system, so it all has one input. So you put, and I'll show you where that goes a little bit later, but you put the cable in there, and that same cable line feeds to here, the same one feeds right up front. You don't have to have separate lines, which is the great part about the key TV system. A light in here, you also have the cooktop because, you know, this is essentially an outside kitchen. So you have the prep space over to the side, two burner cooktop there, and then my personal favorite part, this bad boy. That is our outside fridge. So this, of course, is where you'll have your condiments, your beverages, making things very easy to grab. Making right back a little bit further, outside spray port. So you notice that one didn't have a sink, but it does have water access very nearby. Directly underneath that is a fresh tank fill. If you're going camping somewhere and you don't have uh, city water access, you want to make sure you fill your fresh tank, that's where you'll do it at. Making our way all the way around to the back, you will see the, uh, the rear bumper. This one does have the square end caps on there. That way it gives you a convenient spot in which you can store your sewer hose. Mounted to that is the spare tire with the cover. So, you know, having it back here makes it very easy to access the spare, or the cover will also make sure it stays in good shape. Rear mounted ladder so you can easily climb up onto the fully walkable roof. And you will also notice that you have your backup camera prep. So that way if you want a backup camera, having the prep makes it easier to install, meaning it'll save you money on labor. Right back here is one of two for uh, controls for your power stabilizer jacks. Now, as I mentioned, there is the remote inside, which uh, can control your awning, your slides, as well as the power stab jacks there, making life a little bit easier. So, you know, if you don't want to touch the button, you have the remote as well. And then on the off door side, your city water inlet's located there and 50 amp detachable power cord plugs in right there. If we take a look kind of midship on the off door side, you'll see the black tank flush. So that way to wash out your black tank, you simply take a hose, plug it in right there. The black tank has sprayers built in. It will help wash uh, everything out of there that didn't get drained out with gravity. Speaking of that, if we drop down, you have one of two terminations located right here. If you take a look all the way in the back behind the rear axle, you can kind of see the second one located there. And the valve is actually right through the, uh, the cross member there, right in the I-beam. Now it's kind of tough to see, but you also do have the fully enclosed and insulated and heated underbelly. You know, that's part of that, that thermal package along with that Astro foil. Uh, you know, that way your tanks and your lines and stuff hopefully aren't freezing up on you in colder weather. This is for your front two stabilizer jacks, solar prep. So if you want solar, just buy portal panels, plug it in right there and it will trickle charge your battery. And then this folks is that key TV system I was talking about. So you take your part cable, plug it in right there. And then anywhere, whether it's inside or outside the coach, that feeds to all of them. So you can just hook it up into the TV and you're good to go. You'll see your satellite inlet is located there too. All right, folks, that wraps it up. Again, this is the 2020 Keystone Sprinter Limited 320 MLS. If you're interested in this travel trailer and you would like price and availability, simply click on the link in the description. Thanks again for watching. I'm Ian Baker, and let's go camping.